Welcome to the Growth Mindset Podcast. Today we're diving into happiness, enjoyment of life, and examining our amazing ability to completely mess up our own happiness and disappoint ourselves. We are all human after all. This episode is not here to make you feel bad, but instead to make you feel empowered and aware of how we get in our own way. Life is to be enjoyed, yet we often have lots of ideas of things that would make us enjoy life even more than we already enjoy it. That's very natural. We are designed to spot opportunities and prevent problems. But the issues arise when we fall in love with the ideas and dreams in our head and we get ahead of ourselves and we think about things that are never actually going to happen in our life. Ultimately, so much of our happiness is completely within our control, yet many people live a life of disappointing themselves wanting things that don't make sense for their situation and are just causing themselves pointless frustrations. So this will be a short, sharp episode on how to stop disappointing yourself and live with more harmony. So number one is thinking of your past self versus your present self. Now, the writer who no longer writes anymore is not a writer. The artist who no longer paints is not an artist. The vegan that occasionally eats animal products, is no longer a vegan. And we just have many identities from our past selves that we cling on to, at least in our minds. And it's weird because if you think about the day we graduate from university, we stop calling ourselves a student. We move on straight away. But so many other things we cling to, and they have nothing to do with our present day existence. Just because we have potential skills and even enjoy the practice of an activity, If we do not practice that activity, we are no longer a practitioner. If you haven't run in many months, you are no longer a runner. So every day that you wake up and you don't run, it's disappointing because you have the identity of being a runner, but every day you're also a failure. So if you let go of your identity that is no longer serving you and instead only causing you harm, then you can live a life with less disappointment. And of course, if you want to be a runner, then start running again. So, lesson one, kill ideas of your old self that are no longer true and live in reality. And if you don't like reality, then change it. Number two, our future self versus the present. The entrepreneur that doesn't actually make any money isn't entrepreneurial. The influencer with no followers has no influence. And simply put, you do not become a black belt in karate by declaring it so It must be earned through hard work and not through big words. It is not enough to want something. You must be willing to do what is required to get it. And to quote James Clear, if you don't want to live the lifestyle, then release yourself from the desire. To crave the results but not the process is to guarantee disappointment. Which is exactly what we're talking about here. It's so enticing to get ahead of ourselves and live in the future. We see all these things on social media, YouTube, podcasts, we see people's success and these lives that we want for ourselves. And we're like, yeah, these are changes that I want to have. But we brush past all the problems and difficult crap that are part of the process to get to that eventual goal. And we fail to accept that actually we don't enjoy that process. To become a master of something, you have to become comfortable as an embarrassing amateur. Having a goal is great but you have to want to walk the entire path to get there. Desiring something that isn't going to happen is just another source of frustration and disappointment because every day that you aren't making progress towards your goal is another day that you're a failure, which again makes you feel like crap. Whenever you find yourself wanting something or talking about who you could be, step back and look at the actions that are required today that would help you get there. If those actions aren't something that you actually want to do, then you're not on the path to the goal and you're not going to get there. And that means you don't want that goal, which means you must accept that you don't want it and you can let it go from your identity. Then you can be at peace with who you are and instead of being frustrated with who you are failing to become, you can just be happier. So lesson two is to forget any ideas of your future self that do not align with actions that you want to do in the present. Okay, we have two giant lessons coming up, followed by a giant meta overview roundup that will help bring all these things together after the break. 
But firstly, I want to talk about my sponsor. Right, now, number three. Speaking versus being heard. We all want to be heard. Feeling listened to is a human need. Being listened to is a fundamental human need and being ignored is frustrating and disappointing. The secret of public speaking I learned from a past guest on the show, Lisa Forte, taught me that the secret of public speaking is having something to say. And if you look at the popular guests on podcasts or on YouTube, it's pretty obvious to see who people want to hear from. We listen to the adventure that cycled across the world because they're more interesting than the person that read their book. We listen to Olympians more than we do the people that watch them on TV. We'll listen to a founder who's more interesting than the employee. And if you want to interest people, it starts with being interesting. Now, you don't necessarily have to do something really extreme and crazy, or a lot of those things are actually hugely stressful and might not be something you want to do, and those could be aspirations that aren't healthy. A whole separate topic is our hustle culture these days that makes us feel like we need to achieve as much as we humanly can as quickly as possible, and it's actually not that healthy. But anyway, the lesson I'm trying to show you here is that if you want to give opinions, it helps to have authority. If you lecture me about starting a business and you've never run a business, I'm not going to value your opinions that strongly. If, however, you ask me useful questions that make me think about what I'm doing with my business or maybe give me ways of like reframing my opportunities, that could be a great conversation. So think about where you're coming from And don't claim any authority you don't have. Now, you can earn authority by, of course, doing an action such as starting a business, but there are other ways to be listened to just by providing useful input in a different way other than just giving opinions. Now, in the same way, I don't have any kids. If I tell a parent how to raise their children, that's a good way for me to lose friends. But if I talk about psychology and how we learn behaviors, and that actually humans are built to replicate and copy the behaviors of others around us, much more so than we are able to copy behaviours of just what we've been told, that could be a useful starter to a conversation on how to help your child use your phone less because if you're using your phone all the time, you're not going to get listened to when you talk to them about stopping to use their phone. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to solve all the problems because they probably have friends that use their phones all the time. They look at influencers who use their phones all the time. Just because you stop using your phone, I'm not saying that's going to fix it and I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I am saying that you're not going to get listened to in a conversation about phone use if you use your phone all the time, which is a nice meta point for this point in general. (laughs) Good. So the point I'm trying to make is that if you want to be listened to and respected, that starts by being respectable and practicing what you preach. If you want to talk about the importance of caring for the environment, you must actually be making sacrifices yourself rather than just complaining about others ruining the world for you because that also removes your feeling of autonomy and control of the world around you, and that's going to be the point next. To round up this point, not being listened to is a very disappointing feeling, but it's something that is in our control and is a direct result of our actions. Listening to people is a sign of respect, but respect is earned and is up to us to earn it rather than demand it. What you want to have done and what you want to do can be very different things, From the first two points, we learned that what you want to have done and what you want to do can be very different things. When those two exist in harmony, your words and actions also align, which means that you're more likely to get listened to. If you put time into things you want to do instead of talking about things you want to have done, you're more likely to be someone with respect. If your words are bigger than your actions, they mean nothing. After all, it's better to play a good game than it is to talk a good game. So. Lesson three, actions are louder than words. Always have actions bigger than your words. And now number four, taking ownership. The smoker who blames cigarette companies or their friends or stress is not going to quit smoking. The guy who blames his partner for his poor diet is never going to fix his diet. The runner who blames the weather for not running does not go running. It's easy to blame others for our problems in life. Now, this point doesn't sound like you're disappointing yourself directly because, you know, you're blaming someone else for the disappointment. But the reality of the matter is that you are giving up your control and that leads to your own disappointment. 
Only by taking ownership of a situation do you give yourself the power to change it. When you blame things around you, you lose control and you lose power. Without control or power in life, you become disappointed. And it's not just small things, but big things as well, like I was saying earlier. If you think about the environment and global warming, if you just blame oil companies and other people for the entire thing and yet make no sacrifices yourself, you're breaking rule number three because you have no authority to talk about something because you don't even do it yourself and you're not taking any ownership. That's just a recipe for feeling like crap and annoyed and getting angry. If you practically take actions yourself and look at the ways that you can contribute towards making progress instead of just spreading hate and blame, then you can genuinely be useful and happier. One of our big issues these days is tribalism and blaming groups of people we don't even know for things we're not actually going to do anything about ourselves either. If instead we try to have intelligent conversation and progress, we can all learn to get more done and take ownership. We can all learn to get more done. If we take more ownership and fix our own problems, instead of running around getting angry and blaming others for our crap, we would be a lot happier. I'm not saying that oil companies haven't caused lots of problems, they obviously have. I'm just saying you can do stuff yourself and feel better about the world. So stop blaming others for all your problems in life because that's a recipe for getting stressed and angry and of course disappointed, as well as just being harmful to yourself. So lesson number four, don't blame others for that which you can fix yourself. Okay, so summary and what have we learned here? Each of those points were very separate things but they're all about not disappointing yourself, of course, which is the topic, and they also follows other themes. They're all about lying to yourself about what you expect from yourself. Now, even blaming others, that's when we expect that we would be the person that we dream of if it wasn't for the external thing. But the reality is that the first chance we get when this external thing comes along is that we delegate the requirements for us to do any work and we fail to be the person that we expected ourselves to be. With all four of my points, there was always expectations on ourselves that weren't real and that we weren't going to do them. Now, as we know, expectations are the downfall of happiness and just the creators of disappointment. So the key to not disappointing yourself is found in actually seeing who you really are and accepting the reality of exactly this person that you are with love and kindness. And then working from that foundation of respect you can then work on doing what you can do to be your best self. Of course, there are now many more things in terms of how to create healthy habits and stick with them, how to manage your finances, how to do relationships, which are areas which you might be disappointing yourself in, but they all come down to the fundamental core of disappointing yourself with expectations of how you would show up and not doing them. So these four points are definitely worth journaling on to give yourself some more awareness and maybe try talking about them with a friend or a therapist who can really help provide some support and give yourself a better sense of awareness that's really hard to achieve on your own because these are some big topics to really get into your soul. So with that, thanks so much for listening to this show. If you enjoyed it, then it would be amazing if you shared it with a friend as that's easily the best way for us to grow. And of course, a good rating would be a lovely way of making me feel special and loved. And remember... If you want to enjoy your life, that starts with enjoying today. So be kind to yourself and whilst you're at it, be kind to someone else.